Now, it, it seems fairly obvious that electromagnetic waves have energy, but what may not be so obvious is that they also have momentum. Um, and that seems strange because we learned you know, earlier in the year that momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And as far as we know, a, a light wave has no mass. Uh, so, you know, that, that something, something weird's going on here. Um, but uh, this equation, as it turns out, is not entirely accurate. It works very well for macroscopic objects, but for really small stuff, uh, it doesn't quite work out that way. And the reason that they have momentum is a quantum mechanical thing, uh, which we will get to, hopefully, later in the year. Uh, but for now, we're going to just quantify what their momentum is. Um, so a momentum, the momentum of an electromagnetic wave is just energy divided by uh, the speed of light, uh, which kind of, which makes sense dimensionally if you want to work out the dimensions. You know, a joule is a, a kilogram meter per second squared, meter squared per second squared. And if we divide that by a meter per second, you know, we cancel these out. We've got a kilogram meter per second, which is a unit of momentum. Um, momentum is, is, uh, is, there's some calculus relations that I alluded to briefly. Force is the time derivative of momentum, and energy is the integral of force dx. Uh, so you can kind of see how this bears out into this relationship between energy and uh, and momentum. You know, c is a meter per second, and so that throws in this that uh, this factor of seconds and then the, the factor of meters comes out of this uh, relationship from energy. Anyway, but don't worry about it too much. <laughs> you just need to know that uh, the momentum is an energy divided by speed of light. So this is the amount of energy that's transferred uh, in some amount of time gives you a, a momentum. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's the energy absorbed by, by a given area. So a change in momentum, following some similar logic from our energy, is just that energy density, the average energy density over some time, times that area, times our speed of light times time, divided by C. Uh, and the, uh, which gives us an average intensity times area over C, because average intensity is just energy density uh, times times C times time. Uh, I'm sorry, this should be, have a T. Okay, it's just, yeah, it's just energy density times C. So that's a, a change in momentum. Now an average force is dP by dT, so our at, an average force is just a delta P over t, uh, which then is just I average, the average intensity times area over the speed of light, just cancels out that factor of t. Uh, so uh, a light beam actually uh, gives you uh, a force, which is kind of weird. And remember a pressure, which we called p, but I'm going to write out the word pressure because we have momentum here also is equal to a force per area. So pressure is just an average intensity over the speed of light. OK, now this seems weird. Uh, you know, you guys have used lights. If you turn on a flashlight, you know, it, it doesn't recoil. Uh, you know, if, like if you fire a gun, we talked about how it recoils. Uh, but that doesn't happen with a flashlight. And that's just because this effect is, is really small. Uh, and so it doesn't matter for for bigger objects. This pressure uh, is what's it's called radiation pressure, just so you know. And it doesn't really matter for for you because, for example, uh, on on a sunny day, the average intensity. of sunlight 
at the surface of the Earth is around 1.00 times 10 to the third watts per meter squared. Okay, power over area. Oh yeah, the intensity is given in watts per meter squared power over area. Uh, and and so if we if we convert that to a pressure, this radiation pressure is just this one times 10 to the third over three times 10 to the eighth. That cancels down to a factor of one over three times 10 to the fifth. You take one over three times 10 to the fifth, <clears throat> we get 3.3 .3 repeating times 10 to the minus sixth. And this is, these are all SI units, so this pressure is in Pascals. Well, atmospheric pressure is, what is it, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So even the air pressure is much, much, so much bigger than the pressure from the sun that you don't even feel it. Uh, yeah, and so if you know if I want, I could ask you uh, find the force exerted on a beach towel, on a towel that's 50 centimeters by 150 centimeters, and you know force is just pressure times area, so that would be 3.3 .3 repeating times 10 to the minus six times. 0.5 times 1.5 would be the area of the towel. And so then the, the force exerted on this towel is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. And again, you know, that's much smaller than, than gravitational force. Now, however, uh, it, it can be significant if your object is small enough and the gravitational force is small enough. They actually, they've levitated some small stuff using a giant laser. Like if you have a big enough laser and you just shoot it upward at an object, it will exert an upward force. And if you know your object's small enough, you can you can get uh, <laughs> you can get a really small object to levitate. And they've done that with a, a big laser. Um, also, this can be significant out in space because gravitational force, you know, it it's related uh, to you know it's proportional. Uh, to the uh, distance from the object squared. I forget what I said a second ago. <laughs> Gravitational force, you know, is is proportional to the mass of an object, and you know the mass of an object is proportional to its volume, and the volume of an object is proportional to the object's radius cubed. Now the this force from light is proportional to the area, which is the surface area of the object, which is proportional to r squared. So if this object is really small, its radius cubed is much closer to zero than its radius squared, and this, uh, the force from this uh, radiation pressure can, can actually be significant. Uh, that's, and this is actually why uh, comets have tails because the radiation pressure from the sun causes these little particles in the comet to be blown backward uh, away from the sun more strongly than the gravitational force causes those same particles to be uh, pulled toward the sun. Uh, so that's an interesting little effect. Uh, and it's called solar wind. I've heard it called solar wind. Um, it's really kind of an inaccurate term because wind you know, it's talking about air moving, air moving around, and there's nothing really moving around out in space. So it's kind of a misnomer. Uh, but if you ever hear somebody mention solar wind, this is what it actually is. It's the, the force that's coming from that electromagnetic radiation uh, from the sun. And it acts sort of like a wind because it causes these particles to be, you know, causes things to be pushed away. Uh, but... Like I said, wind isn't really a, an accurate term.